today's soul winning tip is going to just be a, an explanation on the silent partner. Normally I give an explanation on what the silent partner's role is anytime we get someone brand new to church, and, um, or brand new to soul winning really, if they've never been out with us before, it's always a good thing to explain that to them. So if you know the routine and you've done this before, just try to keep that in mind, remember that to be able to explain that because it's, it is important for people to understand the, the role of the, of the silent partner. So I'll explain that real quick right now. Why we do the way, why we do things the way we do. Because normally we go out soul winning, we'll go out in pairs of two. Uh, it doesn't always have to be a pair of two, you know, I mean sometimes there's three people or if there's kids, there's more. But uh, we typically try to go out two by two. And uh, one person does the vast majority of the talking at the door. And there's a lot of reasons for that. So the reason why we do that is because the first, and I think one of the most important reasons is when you're talking to somebody, you want to be able to, to you, have a, you have a train of thought, you have a, a plan in your mind on what things you're going to talk about. You have a direction. You're, you're laying a foundation. You, you know, when, when you're trying to persuade someone, you're trying to convince someone, you're trying to prove a point, there's usually a roadmap in your head of what you're going to say next and what you're going to say next. And a lot of times, in order to get people to understand the gospel or to understand that they're believing in a works-based salvation, you have to start laying a specific groundwork first and get them to maybe admit to something or just to, to see, you know, agree with something and say, oh yeah. And then later you can go and kind of prove why what they had just said that they believed, what they just stated, is, you know, works-based salvation or something along that side. So, with one person, it's great because one person you're going to talk and you know what you want to say, you know where you're going to go, you know what verses you're going to bring them to and kind of lead them around that path of your of your thought process. But when you have, if you have another person just kind of interjecting, something pops in your mind and you're, and you're the silent part and you're like, oh man, this person really needs to hear this verse. Well, when you do that, the vast majority of times you're going to be steering away from what the original person was trying to do and, and the you know, the flow they were trying to get with their, with their argument or with their presentation. So you don't really want to disrupt that because there is a plan. There is something else involved to it. And it's not a bad thing, for, especially when people are new and they want to start opening their mouth and, and giving the gospel and talking to people. It's exciting. And I don't like to discourage that, but at the same time, it's good to know the, um, just kind of the way that we do it. There's, there is a reason for it. It's not just arbitrary. So the most important reason, I think, is for the train of thought. Another reason why we don't like to have both people talking at the same time is because it could be a little bit intimidating for somebody if you have two people kind of coming at you and talking at you versus just having a conversation with one person. So that's another reason. And then now some of the roles that we have for the silent partner, you don't just stand around there and just twiddle your thumbs. There's a lot of things that the silent partner is there for and the silent partner can be doing while the presentation is being given to this other person. One thing you need to be doing as a silent partner is praying. You need to pray that the person will not be distracted. You need to pray that, that it sinks into their mind, that they can understand the, the, the presentation, that the person talking to them, you know, the Holy Ghost will lead them and, and show them the right scriptures to use that will be very applicable to that person that they're going to relate to and understand. Um, also, besides prayer, the silent partner is also very beneficial to be able to cut off distractions. So, let's say you're at someone's door and you're talking to someone, they're interested, they want to hear the gospel, and you're thinking, man, this person's going to get saved. I don't know how many times someone else has pulled up, a friend, a relative, whoever, someone pulls up, and then all of a sudden, they kind of screw it up. Maybe they'll mock you, or they'll say something derogatory, or whatever, and then maybe that person gets embarrassed, or they're kind of told, like, I don't know how many times... The, I'm talking to a man, and then the wife pulls up and is like, come on, honey, come inside. And he just tucks his tail and goes back inside when he's interested in what you have to say. I mean, that's a shame, for one. No man should be like that. <laughs> but for two, it happens, and, and it happens in, in real life. I mean, no matter who it is, someone's always trying to drag, the devil's trying to, to bring these people around to drag them out so that they don't get to hear the gospel and they don't get saved. So what the silent partner can do they can spot when these things happen. Someone pulls up in the car. The silent partner can walk over there and approach that person before they even come up and try to interrupt the conversation and just start up a conversation with that person. And a lot of times, they might not even want to have anything to do with the gospel, 
just start talking to them about anything. Because what you're trying to do, obviously you want to get that person saved too, if you can. I mean, try to bring up the gospel to them. Say, hey, we're from, you know, Big Ward Baptist Church. I just want to give you this invitation. You know, you, you just kind of do the routine with them. But if they're just like, no, 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 no. Just try to bring up whatever you can. To, if it looks like they're going to go and, and, and mess with the, with the conversation that's going on where someone's actually listening to the gospel being presented. Um, it's a very important role for the silent partner to be able to do that. And then, of course, the third thing is, the silent partner is just to listen and to learn. And, and when you pay attention to the way other people present the gospel, oftentimes, I mean, I love going out so and with different partners all the time because everybody has their own approach. Everyone has different verses that they use. Everyone has different analogies that they use, different illustrations, different examples. I'm always learning when I go out with, with different people soul winning because... Again, everyone's got their own style, so just just listen in and pay attention. And you know what we do? You know, I don't want to just say you can never speak. You know, the silent partner is always silent. The you know, one doing talking is just the only person ever doing talking, and that's it. That's It's not like some major rule. But normally what I'll do is if I have something that I think a person really needs to hear, and I do, and I think, man, this, is, this will be really good for them to hear that point, I'll wait until the very end. And if there's an opportunity at the end when, when the person I'm going soul winning with is all done, and you know the person just just didn't get saved, maybe they don't get it or something, then I'll just kind of throw in real quick, like, hey, real quick before we go, you know, uh, Sean here was was trying to show you this from the Bible. The Bible says this, and then show them whatever verse it was that popped into my head that I thought would be beneficial for them. So that's typically the way the way we handle it. When we go out soul winning, and I think it's a very good method. It's not the only method, but I think it's a very good method. Those are the reasons why we do the silent partner. And if you're the silent partner, to uh, to listen to those things, just just let them sink in, and, and, and I think that.